Hi, Martin here. Today I want to show you guys how to add fuses to your existing fuse block. In most cases, there are empty spots in there that already have power to them. All you got to do is get a section of wire from, let's like, say, your local pickup part, take their fuse blocks apart, and just pull out these leads. And you can simply add them to your existing fuse box and hook up other accessories. Like what I'm going to do, I got my Flexolite fan controller and it comes with this large maxi fuse fuse holder. Now I'm going to replace that and go all the way down to a fuse that size. Still the same amperage, but it'll be integrated into this fuse box and have a much cleaner look. We know where all the fuses are, they're in the fuse block. All right, well, let's get started. All right, I got myself a test light right here. One end hooked to ground. And you can see I can touch the positive over here. Now, there's a blade in here, right there. This is would be an empty location. Now, as you can see, I got power there. And then the other slot is empty. And that's the one we're going to fill. And then you hook, the, hook it up to whatever accessory you want to hook it up to. And now there are four empty uh, slots. You're going to hear me in the video say three. I mean four. And one of those slots is actually labeled on here, radiator fan, which is kind of cool. Because in 2001, when they went to the hydraulic fan, and there was no more radiator fan, you know, electric fan. Uh, and since I put the electric fan back into this, my own conversion, I'm going to place that 40 amp fuse right there where it says it is. I think that's kind of neat. So what I've done, I've gone down to pick apart, pulled the fuse block apart, and pulled three of these cables out to fill those spots. And nice heavy gauge wire. This is uh, either 12 or 10 gauge wire. So that's going to work great for pretty much any accessory you want to add. All right, the first thing we want to do is disconnect the battery. Normally it sits right here. I've moved it to the back. I'll hit the battery disconnect switch. I'll be right back. All right, with the battery disconnected, go ahead and remove these two 10 millimeter nuts right here. This red wire I got right there, that is for my uh, fan controller. And while we're in there, in this fuse box, I think we're going to get rid of the uh, fuse block that I got right here for that and move it into one in here. You got to remove these to lift this terminal up so we can actually get this fuse uh, box off of here. Now, there are locking clips right in here. Every one of mine are broke. So this fuse box is just literally kind of just sitting here. And what you would do is take like a screwdriver and pry this over and lift this up. And uh, they break so easy because, well, I'm out here in a very dry climate and the plastic is just dried out. And any little bit of flex and it snaps. So uh, you got to take care in removing those if you don't want them to break. And to make things a little easier, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, radiator reservoir. Gives you a lot more room to pull this up so we can get to the bottom side of this fuse block. Right. Just lift that up and out of the way. We'll just set that over here. All right, now you can pull this up and get to the bottom side of this. All right, now you got these clips on here, these locking clips. You need to pry up carefully and prime over and you can see that the bottom, the, the cover is starting to come off, this bottom cover. And they're all the way around here. There we go. And 
we go. Now, if you're going to add fuses to, let's say, right here, there's three spots that are empty on this particular fuse box, or there were empty. I've already added the wires to them, and I'm going to show you how I did it. First, you got to do is remove all these fuses right here so you can get that yellow piece out of there because that is what's kind of locking all the terminals in place. It's kind of a double lock thing. But first, get all those fuses out, and I'll show you what we do next. You'll need to release the two locking tabs on the back side before removing this piece. All right, got that out of there. Now down inside here, in these terminals, there's a locking tab on each one of those. These also can be brittle. So what happened on mine, as I installed them, they actually snapped. And you can see right here, I used a JB weld to actually seal it into place. I mean, I won't be needing to remove them. So, this particular box is very brittle. It's seen way too much heat. But yeah, you're going right down in here. You're slightly pulling over, and you can release the terminal to pull it out. Let's see if I can get one here. I'll pull one out for you. So, all you need to do is actually insert them. Here we go. There it is. So let's say you got your piece of wire that you, with your terminal on the end of it from the fuse block from the salvage yard. You got the section of wire. So you're going to insert it for the very first time. So you have your section of wire here. This being the empty hole, right here. There we go. It's back in. It's locked in. So once you've added all the wires you're going to add to this part of the fuse block, place this back into place. There you go. And then reinstall the correct fuses in the right locations according to the amperage. Alright, I went ahead and removed this fuse block for my FlexLite fan controller. Kind of bulky. I mean, it's a good looking one, but I'm going to go ahead and integrate it into the factory box. It requires a 40 amp fuse, so that's what we'll put into it. And coincidentally, so this model didn't come with an electric fan. You know, I put that in and I had a hydraulic driven fan. But the cover itself actually lists it right there that it had a electric fan. Of course, that was previous models, uh, 2001 and earlier, I believe. But it still had it there and it had an empty spot for it, so I filled it up. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to use that exact same spot for my electric fan. Okay, I got the wire run through the harness here, down to here, and I just need to uh, solder the two ends together. And soldering this heavy gauge wire, it really takes a lot of heat. There we go. All right, with it soldered, go ahead and slide the heat shrink over it. We'll shrink that down. All right, now that I got that uh, wire all soldered in, we can go ahead and put the back on here. And then you got 
also several extra wires that you can use for whatever accessory. It's kind of nice. I just leave them laid in, right in here, tie them into the harness. And should I need a hot wire for, let's say, some lights I want to add up front or whatever accessory you can think of, you got something right here and you don't have to have put an inline fuse in somewhere. All right, I'll get this back together. All right, well there you have it. I got it all back together, turned on the power, everything's working just fine. So, and then, you know, it helps clean up that engine bay and uh, all the fuses are right there. All right, well, if you enjoyed that and found it helpful and informative, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. And if you've never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications of my future uploads. And check out the description down below where I got uh, links to Amazon for the tools and some of the products that we used in the video. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.